just in. The mathematician general has determined that averages can be misleading. Film at 11. you and Pixie for helping me and Throckmorton move these books. Oh, no problem, Al. Pixie and I have always wanted to see the inside of your raccoon lodge. Well, how do you like it? No wonder you kept us away for so long. What a mess. When was the last time you cleaned in here? Uh, what day is it today? Saturday? Uh-huh. Then it was, uh, 1957. Oh, Al. Oh, don't owe Al for me. No, how did you get to be called the raccoons? I always thought raccoons were fairly neat. They like to wash their food before they eat it. Hmm, well, if you must know, we call ourselves the raccoons because we are just like them. We are cunning, wily, and smart. And you like to knock over garbage cans. Hardy har har. You're a regular riot, Allie. Besides, why are you making such a big deal about this mess? We're leaving this place to go to our new clubhouse. That's where we're taking these yearbooks. Uh, there must be a lot of memories for you in here, Al. Yeah. Oh, look, here's a picture of you at the last convention. <laughs> you know, you're right, Al. You are like a raccoon. In this picture, it looks like you were caught in somebody's headlights. Give me that! Oh, look, here's a picture of Throckmorton leading us on our annual tour of the sewer. What a night that was. <laughs> Don't remind me. I made you sleep out in the hall for a week. <sighs> where is that, anyway? Mm, good question. Hey! Throckmorton! Where are you? Hey, Alfie, how you doing? Hey, Throckmorton, what are you trying to pull? You've only got five books with you. Uh, what do you mean, Alfie? That's uh, all that was out there. Uh, besides, you know me, Alf. I'm a light reader. <laughs> well, that's not fair. Because... Allie brought in 27 and I carried 19. Remember the raccoon motto? I certainly do. All for one and one for all. And the last one in pays for pizza. <laughs> That's right. We're all equal. We share. We care. We, we share, share and we care, care, care in the raccoon's lair with, with thoughtful kindness everywhere. Woo! Oh, brother. Allie, would you do me a favor and just knock it off? All right, Al. Now look here, Throckmorton. Each of these three piles has a different number of books in them. This pile's got 27, this one's got 19, and this one's got five. But what's the average number of books in each pile, huh? Oh, oh, oh Elf, uh, what are you talking about, uh, average? Average, you know, if we had the same total number of books, but each pile were the same, how many books would be in each pile? That's the average, and that's what we each should be carrying. We gotta figure out what the average of 27, 19, and 5 is. Oh, okay, Ralph. Uh, well, we better start moving these books around. Yeah. Let me do that! I'll just move some of the books from this pile onto your puny little pile. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There! We got 16 books in this pile. 16 books in this pile, now we're equal. Uh, wait a minute, Alf. Uh, take a look at this pile over here. Ah, uh, for Pete's sake, there's more books in this pile now. Uh, wait a minute, Alf. I think I got this one figured out. Allie can carry this pile. I mean, after all, she's a strong girl. I mean, she pushes you around and you're a big boy. <laughs> Rock <laughs> one, I'm gonna... Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. This pile of books has 19. If I take two from this pile and give one to you and one to you, everything is hunky-dory. All three piles are the same height, and each stack has an average number of books, 17. Allie, I knew you were a genius when you agreed to marry me. Yeah, the dumb thing was when she decided to go through with it. Ha, 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 ha. Martin, one of these days, bang, zoom to the moon. Boys, boys, come on. Pixie's waiting downstairs in the car. We want to see the new raccoon lodge before you have the first official food fight there. Oh, now, don't you start in with me, Allie. Ed, be careful. Don't slip on that banana peel on the floor. Yeah, come on, Allie. I'm not gonna throw for that old trick. Oh, oh great, Throckmorton. Just great. Well, now we gotta divvy up the books again. Well, I don't know about you two, but uh, I'm out of here. Hey, Throckmorton, what are you trying to pull? You only got five books there. Well, no, 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 
Now, wait a minute, Alf. Uh, we said that the average pile had uh, 17 books, right? Right. Well, so if I take uh, these books and you take the rest of the books, we'll still be carrying an average of 17 books. I mean, some will have less and some will have more, but we'll still have an average of 17. Oh, oh. Right. oh gee oh. Whiz, uh, Alf, uh, you want to have a one-legged race to the parking lot? Oh. Oh. Throckmorton, one of these days, powder the kisser. Ah. This is Nebish. Nebish has a brand new job. He's a grocery bagger at the supermarket. This is Mr. Bymore. He's the manager of the supermarket. He will watch to make sure Nebish does his job correctly. This is Miss How Much. She's an educated consumer. She wants her groceries packed quickly and efficiently. Let's watch. Uh-oh, crunch. I think Nebish messed up. What do you think Nebish did wrong? We'll be back to try again right after these messages. Here's our friend Nebish again. Remember the last time he tried to pack the grocery bag? He put the delicate eggs in first, and then the heavy can on top of them, and crunch. They broke. Mr. Bymore has shown him the error of his ways. Let's watch. Well, he didn't break the eggs that time, but... I can hardly wait to see what happens next. This is a decimal fraction, and it tells us how much of the show is already over. If you subtract this number from one, you'll know how much of the show is going to come. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Uh-oh, here's that nebbish again. What's he going to do now? The first time, he broke a dozen eggs. Next time, he squished a loaf of bread. His boss has told him what he did wrong. Ooh, let's see if Nebish has learned something. What's this? Nebish is putting the heavy can of tomato puree in the bag first. Good idea. It's heavy and it can't be crushed or broken like these cream puffs.
Is this guy ever going to learn? Margaret Huxley has a headache. A bad headache. At last. Oh, I'm sorry. At last, a new study that can help headache sufferers. In a survey of quacks to find out what they recommend to get rid of that nagging headache, 18% said, take a nap with a ficus tree. 9% said, wait for running water until it gets tired and has to walk. And 27% of the quacks questions said, wallpaper a stuffed bird. But what do more quacks recommend a person with a headache do for relief? 45% of the quacks surveyed recommended putting a rainbow trout on top of the head where it aches. This rainbow trout is really great. My headache's gone, and I can cook it for dinner later. Nice trout, Margaret. Thanks. And I'm making a fashion statement, too. 45% of the quacks surveyed recommended putting a rainbow trout on top of the head where it aches. Uh-oh, not again. Here's that nebbish still trying to figure out the right way to pack a grocery bag. So far, he's broken a dozen eggs, squished a loaf of bread, and flattened a cream puff. What more could go wrong? boy, the Nebbish learned from his mistakes and did a terrific job. In fact, Miss How Much was so delighted, she asked the store manager to marry them, which he did. The wealthy Miss How Much set up the Nebbish in the movie business as a producer. His first film, Baggett, First Blood, opens next week at theaters and drive-ins all over. Now it's time for one of America's newest game shows, but who's adding? And here is the host who loves numbers the most, Larry Cedar. How you doing, everybody? Good to see you out there in Edition Land. Welcome to But Who's Adding? And you here in the audience, welcome also. We have a very exciting game for you today. Let's bring up today's contestants and give them a big hand. Come on up. All right. We're ready to add today. Now. Playing for a blue side today is? Anthony. Anthony, how are you feeling today? Good. All right, you look ready to add, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, and playing red today is? Jada. Jada, how are you? Fine. Good, you a little nervous? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know, I'm nervous too. It's a very exciting game. Let's turn around and check out the rules. Now, the object of the game is to cover three squares in a row with your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now, the numbers on the big board represent the sum you get when you add two numbers from the add-in board together. For example, if there's a ring on the four, and a ring on the five, what number can you cover? Nine. Nine. It looks just like that. Right. Now, the player who goes first moves both rings and then announces his or her sum. After that, the next player moves his or her color ring anywhere on the add-in board and calls out their sum. Now, you've got ten seconds to move your ring and call out the sum for the board. If you don't do it in ten seconds, you'll hear this. It means you ran out of time. Also, if you call out an incorrect sum or if you call out a sum that's already been covered on the board, that's a mistake and you'll hear this. So if you run out of time or you make a mistake, you'll lose your turn and your opponent gets to move both rings. First player to win two rounds wins the game. Red goes first. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And red, go. 12. 12, red. Ten blue. Five seconds. Eight red. Five seconds. Oh, sorry, you ran out of time. Jada, you get to move both rings. Red, go. Sixteen red. Sorry, you're running out of time there, Jada. You win round one. We'll take the two rings here. Anthony, you get to go first because you lost. And blue, go. Nine. Nine blue. Ten red. Five 
seconds. Fourteen blue. Sixteen red. Eight blue. Five seconds. Five red. Five seconds. Seven blue. Tough game, all right. Let's have you turn around here. We have a winner. Jada, I got to congratulate you on a very, very good game. Anthony, you did very well as well. It was a very, very tough game. Jada, for winning, we're going to give you a Square One TV calculator. Congratulations to you. And Anthony, for playing so well in such a difficult game, we're going to give you a Square One TV t-shirt. I hope you like that. And you guys have been a great audience. You really supported your team members here. And we'll see you next time on But Who's Adding? <laughs>
Well, we haven't added or subtracted or multiplied or divided many numbers, if that's what you mean. But we've sure tried to solve things in a logical, mathematical way. You mean you don't always need numbers to solve mathematical problems? That's right. Just organized facts and logical thinking. There she is now. Miss O'Reilly, may we talk with you for a moment? Oh, Miss Monday, hello. Hello, Maureen. Hello, George. Actually, I'm in a bit of a hurry. We came to apologize to you. Yes, Maureen, you must know you've been a suspect in this case. But I didn't steal. We know that now. Jasper Stoutman has the Maltese pigeon. No, he does. We have it on good authority, and we've sent our people to pick him up. We just wanted you to know and hope that you'll accept our apologies. What? Yes, of course. I understand. What was that? It's someone running away. Isn't that Noel Sphinx? What? Let me see. He's got a package under his arm. Oh, he is can't be. Stoutman has the pigeon. I'm going after him. Wait for me, George. Don't worry, Maureen. Jane will catch him. She's a fast runner. What? Well, not that. It's the... I mean, George, would you care for a glass of ice water? No, I don't think so. I'll just sit here and wait. I see. Perhaps some iced tea. Lemonade? Lemonade would be fine. Thank you, Maureen. You wait here, George. I'll fix the drinks. bird is worth millions of dollars. Plenty of money for both of us. What? Yeah. Don't you see? I'll sell it and we'll split the money. George, don't send me to jail. For hundreds of years, people have lied and cheated and even killed for this bird. Yes, but not anymore. Don't you see? It can be ours. We've only minutes before the others return. We're sitting on dynamite. Now give me the story and give it to me fast. Not now, George, please. That first day, when you came into my office, you didn't have the bird, did you? I... You played me for a simp, Angel, and I won't play the simp for you or anyone. Don't say that, George, you know I didn't. This isn't the time for that schoolgirl act. We're both standing under the gallows. I didn't mean to. First, perhaps. George, I can't look at you and tell you this. Then I'll tell you. You didn't have the bird, but you wanted Stalman to think you had it. That way he'd come out of hiding and you could trace him. Isn't that true, Angel? Something like that. So you made up that cockamamie ice pigeon story, didn't you? Yes, sweetheart, but I was only thinking of us. Then when you displayed your bird, you put a hot lamp in place of a spotlight so the bird would melt, the water would evaporate, and we'd think poor, poor Marine. Isn't that true? Yes, but... Then when you found where Stoutman lived, you broke into his house and stole the real bird, and now you're planning to leave town with the bird and leave me here holding the cage. Millions of dollars, George. Get a good break, you'll be out of prison in 20 years, and we can talk then. Don't, George, don't say that, even in fun. <laughs> I was frightened for a minute. I really thought you do such wild, unpredictable things. Now, don't be silly, Angel. You're taking the fall. Listen, this won't do any good. But I'll try it once, and then give it up. When a mathematician... George. You tricked me, George. How could you? It isn't something you'd understand, Angel. Take her away, boys.
fur is heavy. What is it? It's the stuff that dinners are made of. Here, son, take good care of it. Thank you. From me and the people of Malta. Nice job, partner. You too, Kate. You're good. You're very good. <laughs> Maureen O'Reilly was tried and convicted of a 459 burglary and a 487A grand theft auto bond. She was put away from society for an appropriate number of years.